what's going on everybody welcome back to another solo leveling arise video hopefully you guys are enjoying the game i know some of you guys are looking forward to the global launch now with that being said there's a lot of information that we need to get out to you guys so you understand how the game works how the mechanics work how the system works and today we're going to be talking about gear everything you need to know about gear how it all works how who can equip what and what you should be looking for in regards to gear we're going to throw artifacts into there as well too on a quick topic. I'll make an artifact video on its own, but I still do want to talk a little bit about it, okay? So first off, gear, weapons. Mostly that's what we're going to focus on. Now, if we go to the actual draw system, I want to clear up a few different things that a lot of people have been asking. So there are hunter gear and then there's Jinwu gear. They're two very different things, okay? So first off, for Jinwu, if you guys want to know, when you go to your banner... All of these weapons here that you can do in the wish list are all Janu banners, okay? These are all weapons that he can summon. The way you can tell is you can see his little face right there on the icon. He is the only one that can equip these. So when you summon for these weapons, guys, your hunters cannot equip these weapons. That's why there is his face icon right in the bottom, and it is blue. Very easy to tell. Uh, so definitely make sure you guys are looking at that before you decide to pull for something and what you want to go for. Your hunters cannot equip that. Now, if I go back to the actual, um, let's go here to Choi, for example, his exclusive weapon is actually found in various different ways. You can either get it through the current event that's going on, or it will probably be something you can craft in the future or in the crafting system. So hunters do have exclusive wep SSR weapons as well, but they're not summoning through the banner. They're in fact going to be most likely crafted and in this case an event now if you guys can also see here there's a little hunter icon right and that means hunters can equip it now keeping one thing in mind even though this ssr weapon for example which i do possess actually for him does exist for choi and he can equip it obviously he'll get the bonus doesn't mean nobody else can equip this so for example if you don't have him but you get this weapon from the actual event for free you can equip it on anybody else that you want so if i equip it here you'll see here she'll actually be able to wear it now what's the difference here you guys notice a little golden border is no longer there right that means the actual skill itself here which is his exclusive skill will no will not apply to anybody else but him so let me put it back on him i'll show you guys what i'm talking about and this is very important to note. you can see here the border actually exists even when you're seeing it there's the border right there so that means yes he will in fact be able to use that skill so make sure guys even if you have SSR weapons that don't and you don't have the characters, it's still not a bad idea if it's the most powerful weapon you have to equip it on random other characters that you use. But the only exclusive skill will apply to that character. Now for Janu's character, on the other hand, you guys can see here, as mentioned before, his weapons only apply to him. Okay, so all the SSR weapons that I possess here only apply to him. So these are going to be things that he's going to be able to use only. Now, a couple things about Janu's. Let's start off with his weapons. There are different elements for each weapon. Okay, you guys can see which elements they are by the top left here. For example, this is light, this is fire, this is water, this is dark, this is wind, etc. Right? So there are different weapons that will do different things. Couple things about weapons. If you are, have maxed out a weapon and you no longer want those weapons, there is a way to salvage weapons. Okay, so very, very important to note that. I'm going to go to the salvage menu right now and show you guys just how that works before we move on to the actual weapons themselves. There's a little salvage button right here. You guys can't see because my screen's in the way. Let me, let me go up. If you click on that, a lot of the weapons that you no longer need. So for example, I've maxed out this R weapon. I no longer want any more of these. You guys can see here, you get quite a bit of currency back. Now, the main thing, keep in mind, if you get rid of a maxed out dupe weapon, you're not getting too many more resources for actual weapon enhancement, but you do get quite a bit more of the traces of dimension, okay? So make sure if you no longer need these weapons, don't let it just sit around idly. Actually get rid of this because you can use a lot of this extra enhancement to level up some of your other weapons. Uh, and it's, it's actually a pretty damn smart idea, okay? So there you go. That does exist for you guys. So make sure you are doing that. Now, let's go back to his weapons. Outside of elements, of course, there are different effects. There are also dupes. Now, how does dupe works? Well, the more of these copies you get, the more the effects will go up. And you guys can see each effect as you increase it. See wind damage by 10% by increase here. You can see infl inflicts a stroke of lightning effects, the same target every five attacks. Uh, deals damage equal to 50% of attacks, so it's this extra skill. Inflicts stroke of lightning with, and then this one here goes when using lightning, inflicts a storm of white flames effect regardless of successful counter attack or not and that's one of the things that happen with the skills when you counter you actually get a chance to do this skill where it leaves a trace of aoe wherever you walk if you don't counter you don't get that skill so these are the bonuses of having obviously 
the ability to get dupes. Now, weapon dupes are going to be important, but they're not a necessity. Important in the fact that if you want to do uh, better in the rankings, obviously, the more dupes you get, the better you'll obviously do overall. That's pretty standard for all gotchas. That's a pretty common situation. Now, the main thing to note is some weapons are going to be defensive. In this case, this is a defensive slash offensive weapon. In some cases, you're just going to be straight up offensive. So, for example, the Saddle Scythe here is pure offense, okay? So, whenever this does its special, it actually does uh, 5%, consumes 5% of current HP and increases all your skill damage by 100%. So, note when you're doing battles what to use. Also, keep in mind the affinity of a weapon, in this case, the affinity being the. Um, the element of a weapon is going to matter. When you do certain stages, it's going to tell you what the enemies are weak against. You'll do a lot more damage if you actually have the proper affinity to get your weapons up. So keep that in mind. Now, you guys can see here, I just got this almost to level 40. In order to advance a actual weapon, you don't need dupes. What you do need is these cubes you can farm and get through mining or you can get through actual gates. So very important to note, it is very costly and expensive. To, to, to enhance weapons, so do not go ham on all your things. Make sure you pinpoint what you're looking for and focus on your SSR weapons, unless you have a lot of dupes for an SR weapon, which is also very, very important and it can be very powerful. So don't neglect your SRs or your rares, as a matter of fact, if you have a lot of dupes for them, okay? So that's how the system works for weapons. All right. Now, in terms of getting hunter weapons, like I mentioned before, the SR weapons and the rare weapons will drop from regular banners. You just summon, you'll get them. Okay. Now, for exclusive weapons like these SSR ones, they are existing in different places. So, for example, in this case, like I mentioned, there's an event currently going on, right? So, the special dice event here. If you click on this, you guys can see here, um, I've got the five star already. Now, as you go through this, you guys can collect more of these crafting material and then eventually craft them. Eventually, when you hit the five, five, uh, step here you're actually going to get the free ssr weapon so this event is really good for giving you the opportunity to get yourself some weapons now to get more dice you can do the daily missions plus every time you draw they'll give you unlimited amount of times to get yourself more of these tokens okay so look if i go continue dice i've got four chances to roll here right you guys can see what i landed on the goal here is to land on the corners okay so these are all bad rolls bad rolls <laughs> Uh, but there you guys go. So there's another. See, I, and when you pass go, like pretend this is the start button, right? When you pass the start, you'll move up an extra slot. You guys can see here now I'm on repeat. So every time I go all the way across to the starts, I'm going to continue getting these now for the remainder of the sessions. So keep that in mind. Now, there's also a leveling uh, event going on here, which you can also collect weapon enhancement gear to level up your weapons and also gold, which you're going to require a lot of both uh, and also the opportunity to get yourself some skill runes. But this is a great way to get yourself some free loot uh, w while just playing the game. OK, so next up, crafting. Crafting is very important for weapons. OK, and I want to I'll do a full craft guide as well, too. But if you go to management here, all right, let me actually use my controller. You guys can craft or fuse. Now, if you fuse, OK, you guys can see here, these are for relics, okay? These are going to be for fusing your, let's do a simple fuse, for example, right? So if I go max, for example, here, it's going to cost money. If I fuse it, this is to get a skill, okay? You guys can see those are now the skills that I just got by using this. This is how skills work, all right? It's very important, the commander's tooth, touch, I mean, sorry, tooth, uh, multi-strike level two, uh, the commander's touch finisher level two, etc. Right, all very important things to note. Now, when you go to, I'll do a whole skill section on this afterwards. But you guys can equip these as well too. You guys can see here how what they all do, what each skill is, and we'll go through this later on. And obviously, you can equip some ruins as well too. So let's go ahead and equip this for now, just for now. We'll we'll do that one. Okay. Um, so let's go back here. <clears throat> now there's obviously crafting, and this is what I want to talk about. The crafting system is how you craft actual material. Now you can see here to get an SSR crafted uh, weapon here, I need 100 parts, right? So you're going to have to hunt for 100 of these parts in order to craft another version of this dupe. So very, very important to note, this event does matter, especially for Choi, because you have them. You can also craft skills. You can also craft uh, another other skills here. You can uh, craft artificial uh, enhancement chips, which lets you level up your artifacts, etc. right? So the crafting system is a great place, but more specifically, it is going to be a place where you can craft here. Now, these tokens here you can only get in the following places, 
okay? The, uh, the shop to get the material exchange and also the battlefield of time, which is something you'll unlock later on in the game as you progress through it, okay? So you can see here, everybody has SSR weapons. They can all be crafted by using the following things. Now, these are high-end materials that you're gonna get through the battlefield of time. So it's very important to note, this will take quite a bit of time to get your your characters the ssr weapons you're looking for and yes they do make a pretty damn big difference guys especially the effects like for example for Wu here the user attack ignores two percent of the target's defense when mediation of powers used increases damage dealt to the target by five percent for three seconds stacks up to three times these are all very powerful effects so eternal slumber is another one for for min for example uh increases the user's hp by this is probably a, a, a typo. Uh, when the user uses Heavenly Blessing, the user and team member's damage dealt is increased by 4% for 16 seconds, right? So you guys can see here, these can become extremely powerful tools for your weapons or for your characters, and you don't want to neglect them. So that's what I want to talk about in terms of crafting, and that's another big thing that you're going to want to do in the future. Now, last thing I want to talk about, and I'll make a separate video about this as well too, is artifacts. Artifacts are going to be your gear. There is going to be gear farming, guys. So gear can be acquired many different ways. You can get them through the portals where you fight, um, you know, the various portals that pop up, the random drops. But the main place to get this actually is in a game mode. And I'll show you the game mode real quick here so you guys can see it. Let me go. It's called Encore, okay? And Encore is a, is a place where you fight different tiered bosses. Encore missions. Here you go. And they do require keys, by the way. Uh, but you guys can see here, you guys can get various different sets and gears from these bosses as you fight them and the different tiers will also level up the boss's power and then you have the ability to get yourself rares epics etc the kit the actual sets also start with uh crit set attack set break set and hp set okay and each boss like i said will drop various different effects of this now the biggest difference between the bosses obviously outside of difficulty is their attributes their passives the amount of gold they give and the amount of exp you get you get in this case you get zero exp anyway so this is how that works remember to do the bosses anyways because you are going to get yourself crystals along the way as well too right as you do these uh things here and then like i mentioned bosses will drop different sets for different uh units and you guys can see here i right across the board right the various different tiers and as you progress through this you're going to see different tiers drop here as well too like legendary tier 5 legendary here legendary here and here now i'll do a whole separate video on artifacts because there there is quite a bit to do with this and the fact that there are uh, max min stats also random stats that you can get here you're gonna have to enhance them etc it will probably require a whole separate video on its own but that's essentially it for weapons guys so key points here to note when you are drawing notice you're going to only get rares and sr weapons for your hunters you can get ssr weapons only for jin Wu. uh in regards to getting ssr ssr weapons for your hunters you have to craft them or do the current event that's going on and you can get that as well too all right guys this is pain hope you enjoyed the video um if you have any questions or comments let me know in the comments section uh, there are various ways to get yourself um different tools if you're going to be pay to win in the shop i can do a shop video as well since this account is a pay to win account uh again i am spending as responsibly as i can for somebody who makes as much money as i do i'm not going overboard uh and i just want you guys to also understand it's very important to also spend wisely this is a brand new game with early access don't go crazy you won't lose your data but at the same time try to play the game a little bit and understand if you actually want to do this versus someone like me who does this uh, and actually benefits quite a bit from a financial perspective. All right, guys, this is Payne. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.